Good evening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another edition of Talking Point Right Show on Hilal TV Channel 347 on DSTV. We are glad to join you for the new year that is 2023. My name is Faraz Patel and I'll be in your company for the next 45 to 50 minutes. Well, the ANC's elective conference recently concluded, of course, it went into a hybrid session at the start of the year. Uh, ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa being elected for a second term, but there is a new top six and, of course, a brand new NEC that comes with it. And we're going to be breaking it down with ANC Veteran League's President, Mr. Snooki Sikalala, who is my guest for today. Mr. Sikalala, good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good afternoon and good afternoon to your listeners. No, it's an absolute pleasure to have you. Uh, Mr. Zikalala, I, I just want to ask you, uh, we saw, of course, on Sunday, the uh, ANC uh, January 8th statement that uh, took place in Mangawung. Now, the conviction rate, uh, obviously, that was back in maybe 2018 when President Sil Ramaphosa was the president to, of course, the one that we can fast forward to now in 2023. There seems to be a change in the mood with regards to a lot of the citizens of the country. How convinced were you by the statement that he made on Sunday? Well, we as veterans like, we are highly convinced by the statement that he made on Sunday because we are part and parcel of those who contributed <clears throat> in the statement itself. As you know, the policy of the ANC and its traditions is that uh, when a January 8th statement is about to be drafted, the president two days before, um, he meets with the NEC, which is the National Executive Committee, and he himself presents... Um, the structure of his um, statement, and then we give an input. All NEC members give an input. And so we as veterans, we gave an input, and all NEC members gave an input, because we are the people who are supposed to make sure that whatever the president has said on January the 8th is being implemented. Um, and so we are really happy that uh, it came out the way it was discussed. It came out based on the resolution of the conference. It came out as... Um, as a promise to society that the ANC now is going to ensure that it delivers on its mandate, it delivers to society um, so as to ensure that we get rid of unemployment, we get rid of crime, we get rid of load shedding, which is the biggest thing that is affecting our people. We get rid of um, managers, and especially in the, in the public sector, who are involved in malfeasance, and of course, uh, our own cadres who are in the ANC, who are involved in corruption. We are leaving no stone and pen in ensuring that the ANC itself is cleansed and is renewed. Mr. Sikalala, are we going to break down some, of course, the uh, resolutions that had come from uh, the elective conference? Uh, but I want to talk about renewal, uh, the renewal of the ANC. That has been a, a big talking point uh, leading up to the conference and during the conference. In its, in its 111-year illustrious history, this is probably the most challenging time for the ANC because we've seen voter confidence go down. We've also seen, uh, you know, it losing a lot of the metros that it had power in since uh, 1994. How does President Sal Ramaphosa and the, the rest of the top six or top seven as it stands go ahead and try and make sure that the ANC still has good standing with its citizens and can find a way to still be in power come the 2024 national elections? Well, when you talk about the renewal process, the Veterans League, um, which is a constitu constitutional structure of the ANC, in 2018, uh, we put in a proposal that we as Veterans League want to drive the unity and renewal process of the ANC. And so we are saying that we cannot drive it uh, once at, at the top. It needs to be drive driven at the bottom, in terms of we have to look at um, having an ANC with a renewed vision, uh, with a renewed leadership. And so we have a new leadership and our vision is being renewed. We were talking about building branches and uh, a new membership of the ANC. We are saying that we have to build credible uh, branches of the ANC because currently some of the branches that we have um, in, our, in, our, in, in, in our country itself are led by hooligans and rogues. And so we want to build credible um, branches whose members are, are people who adhere to ANC policies, ANC values, ANC traditions, and ANC principles. We're looking at we're building a non-sexist and non-racial society. We're looking at building a new cadre of the movement. 
because we said it was going to be a decade, um, a decade of the movement about 10 years ago. But you have seen that cadres that we've uh, built within the ANC currently are cadres who are attracted by what you call craft materialism. And so there are people who are joining, some of them joining because they're looking at um, accessing tenders, looking at uh, getting employment in government. These are not people who are interested in serving society and making sure that the ANC delivers on its mandate. And so I think there's a new um, a vision that has been put in place, is a new vigor that we are seeing that if we don't turn the ANC around, definitely in 2024, we won't be, we won't be in government again. And so I think um, the milestone that the president has presented, we as veterans will make sure that they are implemented at grassroots level. And um, then the policy conference that took place in July made it very clear that to renew the organization itself, to unite the organization, you, the head of the organization, Husser Ramaphosa, and the two presidents, former president, Tabumbeki and Khalima, and the, and the Veterans League, must they must be able to, to take the process of unity and renewal forward. We must make sure that we champion that process. And we as Veterans League were saying that the unity and renewal that we're talking about is a principled unity and renewal. We cannot unite with rogues, we cannot unite with criminals, we cannot unite with people who are interested in serving themselves and not serving society. And that's what society wants to see. Mr. Zikalara, I want to talk about just the way the president handled himself during the conference, and I want to go to a specific date, uh, December, December 16th, when he was opening up the elective conference and former president uh, Jacob Zuma, of course, arrived and we saw a lot of the delegates from the K, uh, KZ and ANC, of course, you know, uh, erupting when the former president came. And obviously it would have been the case knowing that he has a very strong relationship with, uh, uh, that, uh, with that provincial uh, part of the ANC. Just, just your thoughts on how the president, uh, and I'm talking about President Sol Ramaphosa, handled himself but also leading up to the conference when you had a lot of the, you know, former leaders kind of in a way, you know, questioning the leadership of President Sol Ramaphosa. So just your take on how he handled himself and, of course, him eventually becoming the winner and retaining his position as the party president. Well, I think um, he handled himself and the, um, the conference itself with dignity. He did not respond to... Um, to what the former president Zuma did when he came in, he came in late. And of course, um, um, comrades from KZN started making noise and um, cheering him. He, I think he handled it with dignity because that's, that's how you deal with people who are indisciplined. And um, he was committed to make sure that the conference does not collapse. He was committed to ensure that we come out of this conference having taken resolutions that will take the organization and the country forward. I think uh, when it comes to Comrade President Tabumbeki, Tabumbeki, he only criticized him by saying that he has not been effective in ensuring that the economic policies of the movement are implemented properly. For instance, you look at the question of the compact agreement you're supposed to have signed with business and labor, it's almost a year. And so that compact agreement must be implemented. That is what Comrade Mbeki was saying, that he should make sure that that happens. But we are saying because he's the head of the organization, of the organization and head of cabinet, he must make sure that he appoints ministers who are, who are competent and capable and skilled, who will be able to make sure that the ANC delivers in the honest set objectives. Now, some of the people who handled these negotiations at NEDLEC uh, with business and labor, they, they haven't put in much effort to ensuring that business agrees to the social compact that they're talking about in terms of creating jobs, in terms of creating wealth in terms of ensuring that the industries are, are performing at a higher level and also making sure that labor itself agrees to what, what business has put on the table. But because business, they, are, they, are, they said they're prepared to put 1.2 trillion on, on the table to ensure that they revive, they regenerate, they recalibrate the economy itself. And so that, that's an agreement that Comrade Mbeki was saying that the president should focus on because People, our people in South Africa, they want jobs, they want employment, they want to end poverty. They want, to, because if we start giving people those basic things, then people will definitely be dissatisfied and crime will, will increase in the country. And so I think those are genuine, proper criticisms. And within the African National Congress, we do 
allow what you call positive criticism and self-criticism is allowed. Well, after the break, we're going to be touching on uh, the newly elected top seven, the newly elected NEC. And of course, will this NEC still have the ability to go ahead and back President Sol Ramaphosa or up until the next elective conference in 2027, but most importantly, heading into the 2024 elections? Do stay tuned to Talking Point. Welcome back to Talking Point. We are reviewing, of course, the ANC elective conference and the January 8th statement that happened this past weekend with ANC Veteran League's president, Mr. Snooki Zikalala. Mr. Zikalala, I just want to first touch on that top seven. Uh, one of the surprise names that was there, and I think it was an individual who had really been somebody who wanted this position, was the Secretary General, Mr. Fikile Mbalula. Just your take on what he now brings to the Secretary General position, because this is somebody who, of course, was the ANC Youth League president and somebody who brings a sense of freshness towards that position, because we know the SG position of the ANC is massive, given that it is someone who really does take the bull by the horns uh, at Lutuli House. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's, it's good for the organization uh, that you should bring in young people who are very energetic and uh, who have been in the movement for years. And, um, and it's good that they are surrounded by senior people within the organization, uh, because within that top seven, you have uh, the president, you have Paul Mashatile, you have Gwen Ramakopa. Mm. Those are the most senior people that we have in the organization currently, uh, in the top seven I'm talking about. And so they'll be able to make sure that uh, they ensure that he, the, the ship is steered properly. Because um, our view is that uh, uh, the secretary general's position is the, one of the most powerful positions. Uh, because you are in charge of all the nine provinces. You're in charge of the uh, uh, provincial secretaries in the nine provinces. You're in charge of all the branches of the ANC in the nine provinces. It means that the 4,000 members of the ANC, uh, we are in charge of them. We give direction. We make sure that they, they function properly. We make sure that we build strong branches of the ANC. It's a powerful position within the organization. If that structure is not functioning optimally, mm -hmm. the organization will collapse. And so I think we as veterans were happy that you brought in a young person who has got drive and um, who has a vision and uh, who's committed to ensure that the ANC delivers on his mandate. Of course, he's got his own mistakes. And uh, I think we as Veterans League will be able to guide him uh, where, where, because he's not the spokesperson of the organization. The spokesperson of the person who articulates policy positions of, uh, of the ANC is the president and no one else. And so he articulates positions of the movement regarding the implementation of policies of the movement. And so that's, that distinction must be made. And so I think we are happy that we have uh, uh, two young people within the top seven. Uh, and also for the first time in the, in the history of the ANC, we have uh, three women mm. in the organization um, uh, who are at, uh, at, at, at the leadership of the organization, which is important uh, because we believe in gender equality. And so I think we, are, we, we as veterans, we are happy with uh, what we, what the, con the conference delegates uh, had, had elected during the 55th conference of the ANC. Well, I tell you what, if uh, Mr. Umbalula can bring that energy that he had as the sports minister to the SG position, I think it will definitely bring a sense of freshness within that key uh, area of the ANC top seven. You spoke about uh, the three females and one of them leading it, of course, is uh, Ms. Gwen Ramukhopa, who's, you know, really been part and parcel of, uh, of the ANC for so many years. Uh, just having three females in that top seven, the importance, because we know that the ANC has been stressing on gender parity. So just your take on the three females that are, of course, occupying that uh, top seven position. Well, I think uh, the three female comrades are very uh, competent. Mm -hmm. uh, Gwen has said she's been in the organization for, for many years. She's been a mayor. She's been a deputy minister, and uh, she, she, she's been a coordinator, and she's um, a skilled and uh, well-educated person, and she's passionate about uh, service delivery to the poor. And you have um, um, a, another Ramakopa who's mm -hmm. very young, vibrant, and she was, she was once a, a deputy ambassador in, in, in Asia. And then, of course, you've got Namvula uh, um, um, Mokonyane, who's uh, the deputy uh, uh, SG, who's in charge of organizing. And so we've got three women, but we as veterans, 
we are disappointed that uh, the, nat- the, the non-racial character mm. of, of the organization is not captured within the leadership of the ANC because uh, the ANC believe in ensuring that all members of the racial groups are represented mm. in its leadership. And so we as Veterans Link, will, we will put in a proposal that in the NEC itself, we should accommodate at least uh, women uh, of, uh, of or, or Indian, white, or, or so-called colored uh, women, and uh, also um, make sure that the ANC itself as the NEC is a, is a true representative of the South African society. And so the three women are bringing a lot of freshness within the organization because the first time there are three women at the top uh, hem of the organization. And so we are, we are really happy with that. Yeah, I wanted to touch on that, and there's something important that you've brought up, Mr. Zikalala, about uh, the racial, obviously, makeup of, of the of, of the ANC NEC, because we saw Mr. Derek Hanukum, of course, he's exited uh, for personal reasons, uh, him wanting to obviously sit back and retire with his family. But we don't see a lot of Indians, coloreds, and whites within uh, the makeup of the NEC of the ANC. Uh, obviously, you've just said now that the, uh, the, the Veterans League is going to be writing to the mother body of the organization. Is there a sense of concern that the, 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 the racial makeup of South Africa is not reflected in the current NEC of uh, the ANC? It is a big concern for us. It is a big, big concern for us as veterans. Um, during the conference itself, we as veterans we made sure that in our delegation, we're given a delegation of 25 people. Mm. And out of the 25 people in our delegation, we had uh, about four comrades of Indian um, origin. Mm. We have about five comrades of, uh, we are coming from white community. We have uh, comrades who are coming from the so-called color community within the Veterans League. Mm. We made sure that that racial composition of the ANC is being captured within the delegation that went to the conference. And so for us, it is a concern. We know very well that uh, over the last uh, uh, 15 years, a lot of comrades who participated in the United Democratic Movement and uh, also were in the, edge, in the NGOs, which brought down mm. the most atrocious system of apartheid, who participated actively mm. in destroying apartheid. And uh, they find they found themselves marginalized during the Zuma era within the ANC itself. And so we as veterans were bringing them back and making sure that all those comrades from other racial groups are being brought back into the structures of the ANC. They are not angry with the ANC. They were angry with the leadership that, that, uh, of the ANC, which was involved in malfeasance and state capture. They were angry with that. But immediately, if they see that the new leadership of the ANC, the Veterans League, is there, to make sure that it makes their home, they will, they'll come back and give more um, energy in reviving the ANC, making sure that we reflect the demographics of South Africa. We are not happy with what you see in the ANC, and they will make sure that within the Veterans League, we bring back all those comrades who have lost confidence in the ANC leadership. But we are saying to them, you, you have, can't fight the ANC from outside. You have to come inside so as to help us to change the ANC, to re-energize it, to make it much more accountable, to get rid of corruption, to make sure that the ANC delivers on the set objective, to make sure that those who are found wanting go to jail. That's what is important. We're not going to allow corrupt elements to be within the structures of the ANC. Before we go to the break, uh, Mr. Zikalala, and I'm going to allow you a lot of time on this, uh, the NEC makeup, and I'm not going to go through all the names, there are a number of individuals who have allegations towards them. Now, the, uh, the step down uh, uh, policy of the ANC, step aside. step aside policy of the ANC. Obviously, the, the, there's debates around it, whether it should be implemented or not. How, how does the top seven now deal with this, knowing that there's a lot of names in that NEC who, who if the resolutions are taken, should be stepping aside, given the allegations that are against them? From a Veterans League perspective, what's your take on this? Because... Those names are there. They've been elected by the branch delegates. And, you know, they can turn around and say, well, I'm part of the NEC, so you need to really find a way to make sure that I can be stepped aside from the NEC. No, no, no. The conference, the Fifth Conference um, resolution does say that the mm. step aside rule um, um, uh, applies. Yeah. And so within the NEC itself, I don't see uh, anybody who's been charged for corruption, who's a member of the yeah, I'm just saying, these are allegations. None. None of, no, no one's been charged. No. I'm just based on allegations itself. Yeah. Yeah. So th- those are allegations. Mm. The only person who was found guilty of, um, mm. of uh, which was a criminal yes. act of having broken a jar full of ice 
on um, on on a councillor in Babeja. He's the only one, yeah. and um, uh, who's there in the NEC. The rest are allegations, mm. and that issue of uh, Angela Longisa is still being handled by the NEC. Because what what happened at the conference is that some delegates from the Eastern Cape they wanted him to to be elected to the NEC. Mm. They were saying that he received parole and uh, that uh, he's legible to be to be elected. And uh, the conference had to sit and debate for four hours, debating a, an act that is committed by an individual. <laughs> and so not for, in the interest of the organization, but in his personal interest. Mm. He, was, he, he broke a jar full of ice on an individual mm. and he's criminally charged. Mm. And so we couldn't understand why certain individuals had to hold the conference to ransom for four hours. And so in order to break that, um, there was a proposal saying that let the NEC, the coming NEC, and let the preparatory committee of the ANC look at this matter and to say, is it true that he received parole? Is it true that his, his uh, um, criminal charges can be reviewed? And then from there, if it's true, then the ANC must look at, at it. But you cannot have people are criminal charged who are members of the NEC. You cannot. Uh, the step aside rule applies to everybody. And so I'm saying with others who are there, uh, it's still a rumor. And so we're waiting for the law enforcement agencies to take action against them. Immediately, if they are criminally charged, they will definitely have to step down. They cannot be the face of the organization. Like in any change, in any organization, immediately if you cross the line, um, that organization will deal with you severely. And so we're not going to allow the ANC to name to be tainted, its integrity dented, its dignity dented. We're not going to allow that to happen as veterans. We've got a lot to lose. And uh, I think our people would want to see a renewed ANC mm. that is led by credible uh, 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 leaders, leaders with dignity, who will make sure that none of them is involved in malfeasance. And those who are found involved in malfeasance, let them face the, the, the law, the rule of the law. It must apply to everybody. That's, that's, that's our, 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 um, our position. And we are not compromising on, that. on corruption. We are not compromising at all. After the break, we talk the challenges facing the country and some of the resolutions taken from the recently concluded conference, one specifically, the one that haunts South Africa every single day. You know what I'm talking about, load shedding. After the break, we continue the conversation with Mr. Snooki Zikalala. Welcome back to Talking Point. We are continuing our conversation with ANC Veteran League President, Mr. Snooki Zikalala. Mr. Zikalala, we have to start with uh, load shedding. Uh, the, 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 how do we, we don't even know how to call this, the horror show that keeps on haunting each and every South African. One of the resolutions taken was, of course, to have uh, ESCOM in place under the Mineral Resources and Energy Department. But the question we ask ourselves, is, does it really resolve the current load shedding that we are going through? I mean, as we speak right now, it's stage six. Uh, we see stage four also happening. So just how do, how do we resolve the situation? But most importantly, how does the ruling party resolve the situation, knowing that this is something that is affecting so many South Africans and we are just understating the current situation that is happening? I don't think that we're understating the situation that is happening now. We know very well that it impacts negatively on the economic growth of the country. We know that um, small businesses are closing uh, because they can't afford generators. We know that um, it, it, uh, it results to mass unemployment in the country. We know that it, it results in the increase of, uh, of criminal activity by unscrupulous elements who know uh, and target houses that uh, are being load shedded. And so we know, we know the impact of it. But I think um, with, with the proposal from the economic cluster, of the ANC saying that uh, the energy uh, department must take over the ESCOM so that it's streamlined. It falls mm -hmm. under the ministry, uh, the Department of Mineral and Energy Affairs. I think it's a correct one. And um, we have been happy, we know very well that um, ESCOM is one of the uh, areas where there was uh, state capture was, uh, but you can't talk about that now. We should have corrected it is uh, those, those issues that were related to state, state capture. We know that there's mass corruption within ESCO. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that there are syndicates that are operating within ESCO. That is why the government wow. decided that um, they will use the, uh, the army to, to, to patrol some of the areas to make sure that the security 
especially in the big plants uh, within the country itself, because that's a national grid. And so we are happy with uh, that is happening. The biggest problem that we have with ESCOM is a question of management. Mm. And so we hope that the new minister uh, who may will take over, that is Comrade Gwede, Gwen, uh, Gwede Mandashe, if he takes over ESCOM, he make, he make sure that he brings in a new board with new fresh ideas, a board which will be held accountable by the minister. We, as the members of the NEC, we don't hold board members accountable. But minister, we hold the minister and the president accountable. And so we hope that um, there will be new energy. Uh, I mean, we're not saying that Comrade Pravin did a very bad job. He managed to clean um, clean ESCOM. Uh, he managed to bring in um, new uh, young people, young managers into ESCOM. But senior and skilled people left ESCOM. And so that's why we're making sure that we attract them, we attract them back into ESCOM and to make sure that those plants are run professionally and they are run by ethical people, and uh, that um, those who are involved in criminality within ESCOM, they must be dealt with forthright and forthright. And so that's what we can say, without making sure that the criminal elements who have been benefiting from ESCOM for years, of course, it's not going to be easy for them to allow uh, that uh, they should be targeted and to allow that they take um, a bread out of their, their mouth, but they're doing more damage to the economy and uh, than, 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 than the, the economy deserves. And so we hope that uh, with the streamlining itself, saying that it should fall under DMR, it will bring about sanity. There'll be, uh, there'll be the, uh, a, a, a sense of purpose, a sense of ensuring that there is one policy implementation from one department. Currently, uh, Gwede Mantashe was saying this, Pravin was saying that. Mm. And so we had two ministers uh, not agreeing on how to deal with what you call a just transition. Now we'll have one minister dealing with just transition and we'll make sure that that is done properly. The, what with the as African National Congress, we don't, as veterans, we don't agree that you should close the coal plants immediately. It should be a gradual process that should happen. You look at uh, Germany now, Germany is reviving its, its coal power station. You look at uh, uh, England, Britain is also reviving some of the coal power stations. And so we should look at all that, but you cannot just say you are getting rid of coal in South Africa. What will happen to the whole of Weedbank and Bumalanga? It means that mass retrenchments will happen. There'll be mass poverty. And yet we've got coal that is there, that is lying underground. And so I'm saying that the question of just transition will be better managed uh, on behalf of society. And um, the DMR will have to come up with good policies that will look at how the just transition is managed by the DMR itself, not by public enterprises. We could speak the whole day uh, about uh, load shedding, Mr. Zikala. For okay. purposes of time, I, I want to just move on to uh, the fight against uh, crime and corruption. We, you spoke earlier about state capture. How much of resources needs to be put into crime-fighting organizations like the NPA and the Hortz to make sure that this does happen? We have seen, of course, over the last year and a half, uh, the fight against those who have been accused uh, of uh, state capture. So just the importance of making sure that those who were part of state capture are brought to book. Well, yeah, I think um, Shamila Pateo has done a good work mm. so far uh, with the limited resources that he has. As you know, that um, during the time of state capture and immediately after uh, the fifth administration, when it came, came when he took over from uh, Tabon Baker, the, the whole structure of NPA was decimated. All skilled, competent, and committed investigators left NPA. And so it's very difficult now to to make sure that you bring you bring in they bring them back into the fold into the NPA. The same thing with Hawks. All the investigators left Hawks because they were they were hunted down, and uh, there was a purpose of uh, destroying the economy of the country. And so to rebuild that capacity is not going to be easy. But um, with state capture itself, we have seen senior man uh, managers uh, of ESCOM. Being, being arrested. We've seen um, big companies uh, which benefited out of state capture being forced to pay back the money that they managed to get out of uh, state capture. We've seen um, uh, 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 individuals, ordinary people who are involved in crime within ESCOM being arrested. But what is important is that you don't arrest them, they must be prosecuted and they must land in jail. 
That's what is important for us. It's not going to be easy because uh, Shamila Padoy believes that uh, before he, uh, he arrests people, there must be a quality and concrete evidence that uh, the case can be able to 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 sustain itself in in in, the, in 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 courts. And so he was saying that he'll never clamp uh, on anybody until he knows that it's got uh, evidence mm. that will be able to be able to sustain itself in in the court of law. And so we appreciate that. But as you know, the will of justice turns very, very slow. Mm. But um, I think it will happen. Those who are involved in criminality in the country itself, they will definitely face the full might of the law. That's what you believe in. The rule of law in the country must apply. Before I, uh, before we go to the break, Mr. Zikalala, I just wanted to touch on, I mean, there's so much of resolutions, but the one that uh, caught my eye was the Reserve Bank, uh, the ANC resolving that the uh, the South African Reserve Bank should not be nationalized. Uh, just your take on it, was that the right move? Well, they, no, they said, well, they said the, the, the South African government must try its level best to buy um, mm. the, the shareholders yes. out yeah. of yeah. the Reserve Bank. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, that's but, what they are saying. Yes, yes, but by yeah, not so a, I, I think, I, I think um, uh, it, it has been agreed mm. that um, once the situation allows itself, mm. the ANC and has raised enough capital, mm. they will be able to put in um, an offer, especially to shareholders that they want to buy them out. Mm. But uh, that will not happen now, as you know that immediately if you say to shareholders who want to buy them out now, the price of, uh, of shares goes up. And so that's a difficulty that the ANC is facing. And also the, the, the question of the Reserve Bank itself is mandate. Uh, it has to change. That's what um, the conference are saying. You should look at employment creation, job creation. It, it must not only be inflation targeting. And so that's what the conference wants to see happening. And I think it, it will happen. And that's, that's what I believe in. After the break, we conclude the, the discussion with Mr. Zikalala. We're asking the question, the next 18 months, how important is it for the ANC heading into that important 2024 national elections? Do stay tuned. Welcome back to Talking Point. I'm in discussion with Mr. Snooki Zikalala, the Veterans League President of the African National Congress. Mr. Zikalala, the next 18 months, uh, a lot of people have spoken about the drop in voter confidence within the ANC. We've seen the ANC lose, as I mentioned earlier on, a lot of the key metros within the country, which has, of course, fallen into the hands of the main opposition, which is the Democratic Alliance. How important is the next 18 months for this party? You've been there for so many years. You saw the dark days of apartheid. You've seen what is currently happening now with the ANC. Just the stressing of importance for the next 18 months if they are to hold power, and I'm talking about complete power in South Africa. Well, the next 18 months um, will be challenging for the ANC itself. And um, as, as, we, as, as veterans, we have put in a program which is called um, the Program of Action, uh, which will make sure that we have the ANC to implement it. What we are saying is that Veterans League is that um, we like to strengthen the election campaign mm -hmm. capacity of the ANC, we want to mobilize and organize multi forces and all, all and all sectors of society to support the ANC. We want to strengthen the leadership um, selection process of the ANC, and thirdly, we want to strengthen the alliance. What we are saying is that the biggest problem that the ANC faces currently is the question of cadre development. Mm -hmm. We, the ANC, since 1994, we came into power. We until um, uh, uh, ten years of, until last year, we never invested in care development of our people. And so, without investing in care development of our people, we won't be able to produce caters of good quality, caters who are skilled, who are competent, who are passionate, by in terms of serving society. And so, we are focusing on on care development in veterans. We're focusing on ensuring that the municipalities where the ANC leads are, uh, are, they, they are, are managed by people who are skilled, who are competent, and people who are, com who are passionate about service delivery. Not only ANC people, but South African patriots. We, we believe that South African patriots, there are those who are, who are prepared to serve and make sure that they are the ones who are employed in all municipalities. And you have to employ people who are fit for purpose. Our people don't demand much. 
they, they, they want water, they want sewerage, they want uh, uh, service delivery in terms of uh, ensuring that there's housing, in terms of sanitation, the sanitation must be there, and the cleanliness. Those are basic things that our people want. But if you don't have people who have gone to, to training, to schools, where people are project managers before. We don't have a lot of project managers in the country itself. And so we believe that the ANC must invest in project management. If you look at our public works, our buildings that are owned by public works of, of the ANC, they're collapsing. And so why are they collapsing? Because they don't have project managers. But who's running those, those, ent those entities is the African National Congress. What we are seeing is veterans will make sure that their program of action is directed at assisting the organization to ensure that the cadre deployment, which is very, very important, those cadres who are deployed there should be cadres who are skilled, who are competent, who are passionate about delivery, and who are incorruptible. That's what is important for us. We'll be able to deliver on our set objectives. If we don't do that, come 2024, the ANC will lose power. And once the ANC loses, loses power, what it means is that the aspirations of the poor will be lost as well, because the poor, poor of the poorest believe in the ANC, believe that the ANC is the only organization that can attend to their basic needs. Mr. Zikalala, we, we always talk about the balancing act that a president needs to have. Uh, on one side, he needs to try and make sure that he uh, keeps the, par the members of the party happy. But on the other side, he also needs to make sure that he keeps the citizens of South Africa happy. Is President Cyril Ramaphosa able to do a balancing act or is he in a position where he needs to choose either or, either the party over the people or the people over the party? No, no, no. I think he's, he's, um, he has made it very clear that uh, we, we, we have to make sure that we, we deliver services to, to society. That it means that because we are there, because of society, is not all... Um, uh, 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 people in South Africa who are ANC who voted for uh, Sir Ramaphosa. 10 million people voted for him during the last elections to become the president of the country. And the ANC has got uh, less than 1.2 million members. And so it's members of society, South African citizens that we have to serve. We have to serve South African citizens. And South African citizens, the only thing that they want, they want quality service. And so that's what we need to do. And so I think he is aware of that. But if you don't balance the act, make sure that party members who are there are members who are fit for purpose, are members who can be able to deliver on our promises to society because we are there to save society. And so without society, the ANC wouldn't be there. And so what we are saying is that we'll make sure that that happens. That balancing act we have, but it's important to have a very strong, credible organization that is led by ethical leaders, incorruptible leaders, leaders who are prepared to serve society, not to serve, to serve themselves. Mr. Zuki Zikalala, we'd like to thank you so much for joining us. We wish we had more time to delve into so many issues, okay. but we'd like to thank you for making the time for us here on Talking Point on Hilal TV. Thank you very much. No, it's an absolute pleasure, Mr. Snooki Izikalala. He is the Veterans League president of the African National Congress, just breaking down, of course, the recently concluded ANC elective conference and the January 8th statement that happened this past weekend. Well, that's all we have for you here on Talking Point from myself, Faraz Patel, and the rest of the team here on Hilal TV. We will see you same time, same place next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.